wanted to illustrate through the most recent information we've had out of Benghazi about the select committee where things are and how the media is reporting it. Well, why don't we do that? Last week, we reported on Susan Rice, the woman who went on five Sunday shows and lied about Benghazi being a terrorist attack and the information that they had. That was revealed in an email, White House directly involved with Ben Rhodes, talking about how it should not reflect any failure in our policies. <laughs> Blamed it on a YouTube video. Yeah, well, she was asked last week about this. And the question from Judy Woodruff of PBS at a women's forum was if what the select committee would discover, the, what select committee might discover. And her response was, roll it. That we're not aware of right now. Dang if I know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, we, the administration has produced, I think, 25,000 pages of documents or 25,000 individual documents. They've uh, uh, supported, participated in, contributed to the investigations of you know, seven, I think, different committees. Uh, we have had an accountability review board by a very distinguished uh, group of, of outsiders. Um, you know, House and Senate committees have pronounced on this repeatedly. Um, so uh, it's hard to imagine what, uh, what further will come uh, of, of uh, yet another uh, committee. So she also went on to say this. Roll it. Do you not think it's legitimate for, as the committee chairman, Congressman Trey Gowdy, said, uh, to look at, among other things, whether the administration should have done more to, to make that consulate safe, to make the ambassador safe before this happened? Absolutely, which is what we've done, which is why we had an accountability review board and why we're implementing the recommendations of the, account the accountability review board and why we're seeking the resources we need not only uh, to deal with uh, what transpired in Libya, but the risk that, that our personnel may face in various other parts of the world. Uh, the security and safety uh, of American personnel is absolutely the top priority of the president of the administration and ought to be of Congress. So to the extent we're focusing on that, uh, I think we all agree that's where the focus ought to be. All right, several other things. I Interesting. Yeah. Attacks leading up, requests for more security. And our focus should be on the truth, right? Well, don't let that, it didn't stop there. Bill Clinton defended his wife, Hillary, former Secretary of State, about Benghazi last week as well. Roll it. In my opinion, Hillary did what she should have done. She uh, impaneled a very high-level review committee with the immediate past chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mullen, who's backstage, and Tom Pickering, our state's most, I mean, our country's most distinguished senior diplomat who's worked for more Republicans than Democrats in his life. And they looked into what was wrong. They gave 29 recommendations. She took them and started implementing them. And they established the fact that whether it was right or wrong in the past, secretaries of state never were involved directly in these security decisions. And they also have untangled what was an early mystery at Benghazi when all we knew was that four people were killed. And we know now two of them were heavily armed CIA contractors who were military combat veterans. And they were part of a group of 20 authorized to provide security, among other things, where they were in Benghazi. Select committee, uh, ARB didn't interview Hillary. She selected it and 
Nobody was under oath. I, oh, and the, the recommendations. Okay, but funding didn't have anything to do with the security. In fact, there was money there that was unused. That said, that was something they keep coming out with. McCaskill came up with that one again because they'll repeat it enough thinking that low-information voter will tune into that. And that's why we do these things, just quick little updates on the news. Former President Clinton also had this to say. Roll it. And uh, it's nowhere. And the last time we had one of these things made public was when I did it after the Africa embassy bombings in 1998. And so most Americans don't even know how many American diplomatic personnel were killed when President Bush was president. They don't know what, if any, after action review was done, what, if any, recommendations was made, were made, what, if any, action was taken to implement those. So I think the, my advice to everybody involved is to be not defensive and realize what this is and what just is answer the questions. What is it? No, nah, you just want me to get in a political fight. I'm not running for anything. I'm not doing that. No, but I've already got my political statements out there, ARB talking about implementing the the suggestions and we're not going to address the lie what did that memo say what was the key line in that memo hmm. to underscore that these protests are rooted in an internet video and not a broader failure of policy they knew from the get-go as a terrorist attack knew from the get-go tom jocelyn weekly standard took out references to okay it was a cover-up 60 Minutes also helped him out. Steve, I love the Iranian regime, Croft. The latest useful idiot. Yeah, they don't want to wipe Israel off the map and the phony fatwa against nuclear arms. Yeah, that's it. You just keep believing them as they slaughter our soldiers and our citizens as they've done over the last 30 years and innocence. That's fine. The Iranian regime, that's fine. See, that's why you have nothing but truth. Could they be that corrupt? Yes, they could be. But hey, look, I'm not going to ask the questions that should be asked. I'll just uh, see what Trey Gowdy, federal prosecutor for 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he has some really good questions. And he asked the press the other day, not telling them how to do their job. But hey, some people are questioning the select committee of what we know, what we don't know. And here are some questions. Let's see if he has any substance. Roll it. Can you tell me why Chris Stevens was in Benghazi the night that he was killed? Do you know? Does it bother you whether or not you know why Chris Stevens was in Benghazi? Do you know why we were the last flag flying in Benghazi after the British had left and the Red Cross had been bombed? Do you know why requests for additional security were denied? Do you know why an ambassador asking for more security days and weeks before he was murdered and those requests went unheeded? Do you know the answer to why those requests went unheeded? Do you know why no assets were deployed during the siege? And I've heard the explanation, which defies logic, frankly, that we couldn't have gotten there in time. But, but you know, they didn't know when it was going to end. So how can you possibly cite that as an excuse? Do you know whether the president called any of our allies and said, can you help? We have men under attack. Can you answer that? Do any of you know why Susan Rice was picked? The Secretary of State did not go. She says she doesn't like Sunday talk shows. That's the only media venue she does not like, if that's true. Why was Susan Rice on the five Sunday talk shows? Do you know the origin of this mythology that it was spawned as a spontaneous reaction to a video? Do you know where that started? Do you know how we got from no evidence of that to that being the official position of the administration? Dang if I know. Isn't that classy? Oh, a national security advisor who lied on five Sunday shows. Dang if I know. Yeah, that, that, that sticks. That sticks. That steams my beans. That chips my beef. That makes me angry. It's frustrating to have that kind of response from 
someone who ostensibly should be the most concerned. I remember Colonel Kakua making the point, Chris Stevens was one of their own. But they got that filmmaker in jail, didn't they? They, they made sure on that. Let me ask you, with the IRS and what we've learned with 11 emails and the communication and what we discussed last night with Hans von Spakovsky during this segment, actually, right before David Garnstein Ross came out and said, yeah, the intelligence community is the most politicized it's ever been. That was a pretty big, that's a pretty big story. That would be huge news. David Garnstein Ross, our good friend, I'll post that interview that we did last night during this time. But back to Hans about the pressuring of the IRS or the recommendation to pressure and go after these groups. I mean, and, and now you, and now we go back to, I just learned about it on the news. This is not to frustrate you. It's to ask you, what kind of government do you want? What this inevitably is, is not holding people to account. And people either claiming not to have the time or not caring or buying into the media spin, which we tackle day in and day out, and we talk about it a lot. But when you have the mainstream media, general term to encompass a, a fair amount of the alphabet soup networks and their baloney, their stew, their bunny stew, as my daughter would like to say, it is something we need to recognize and what cuts through the mainstream media why do people stop trusting the media just think about it because the reality inevitably hits them what I see policies do and what liberalism has done is not allow people to feel the impact of the policy or the consequence of one's actions and if they do and they start mentioning those consequences, well, they, they must be a birther or they must be some kind of conspiracy theorist. They must be sitting on top of a building during a hot August day in L.A. with tinfoil on their head like a Starsky and Hutch villain. Where'd that come from? The, the fact is, that's, that's how they, they do it. Rather than just address what is at hand. You say, Crane, it, they're not... Big Hillary supporters, not about that. Really? Hmm. It's not about that. They're not pushing Hillary. Karl Rove makes one comment about an episode involving her health and how that will be a question. She referenced it during that time. I don't hate Karl Rove. I don't like and agree with everything he does, and I think he's made some strategic moves that I would identify him more with an establishment, which I think is part of the problem within the party of the Republican Party. Yeah, big time. I don't dislike the man. I think he's very smart. I think he is passionate about what he believes. Having said all that, he makes a comment and rather than focus in on the attention that should be focused in on the questions of Trey Gowdy and focusing in on the unanswered questions or naming one accomplishment out of the Hillary Clinton State Department, that reset button worked, Crane. Come on. Yeah. Good. The press looks at this as an opportunity to run against Karl Rove as like some Dr. Evil-esque character. Ew. Ew, really. That's the worst Dr. Evil impression. Roll it. Republican attempts to take down Hillary Clinton are in full swing after a headline grabbing attack from Karl Rove. So will Republicans stop at nothing to keep her from running in 2016? It all started when Karl Rove, once called Bush's brain, said Hillary Clinton suffered traumatic brain injury after a 2012 fall and concussion. In baseball terms, it looked like a brushback pitch, perhaps to scare Clinton from even running. As one Republican operative said, Carl is either an evil genius or just evil. <laughs> I can't, I can't make it up, baby. That's what it is. That's how distorted it is. I have people in my own family. Hey, I. Does this ever happen to you? 
I've told the story about being Thanksgiving or Christmas, and your in-laws? No, not my in-laws. My in-laws? No, not at all. I I, I don't speak against my in-laws because speaking against them wouldn't be the truth. I love my in-laws. I'm amazing. I love my family. My point is, I have conversations within my own family, which is largely conservative and Christian. But the conversation will come up and they'll start repeating things they've heard on the news. Now, do you ever have this happen to you? Where you sit there and you, you can't believe somebody who's related or so close, a friend, could be... Don't name call. Don't name call. So misinformed. Not aware. But they're getting a headline. Or they're reading papers in the United States. They're listening to Chris Matthews as if Blondie Tingles himself is not some rabid, anti-conservative, at times a nut bar, quite frankly. He's jumped the shark so many times. He's a brilliant man, but he is a nutty guy smearing people and they'll repeat it and you'll sit there and just it's like how many ticks do you go back what do you you have to unwrap unwind extract where they're wrong and get back to the truth and they're so wrong oftentimes you just say that is just plain not true but they'll repeat it and then they'll make it about personality and it just gets you get stuck on stupid with these people and they're not stupid. They just are not informed. I know. Speak truth and love. Be salt and light. Yeah. Being salt and light. Speaking truth and love. Loving is not lying. And sometimes you've got to make a point very clearly. But the way people really learn is the direct impact of consequence to their action. For example, I look at these people who are outside union, outside fast food restaurants, getting people to complain about seven fifty dollars an hour not recognizing what we've detailed countless times about minimum wage, two-thirds, maybe even three-quarters actually earn more to get a raise in the first year. We're talking about not people supporting their family. We're talking about a very, very small part of the workforce, like 2%. And nonetheless, they're talking about $15 an hour and a living wage. And I just have one question. Where does the money come from? Where does the money come from? Well, liberals in government don't have to think about this because they can print it. And they can sell our debt. They can pass it on intergenerationally to our children. And they can talk about being compassionate. But sooner or later, the system breaks down. And then when you warn of the breakdown, you get accused of throwing granny off the cliff or being some kind of conspiracy theorist because you want a cons a currency that is strong, consistent, and one that empowers you because you know inflation takes away, it's a tax, Reagan explained it, it takes away your power. It also drives malinvestment, That is our good friend, Brian Dimitrovich, brilliantly outlines. I got to get him on tomorrow. I think I'll have him on again because he's just that good. If we can get him, it will be a late call. Here's my point. If you're running a business, if you're pursuing your dream, if you're using the godly gifts that you've been blessed with, and I know each and every one of you has, and that's the great news, that you are created and you've been given gifts and you realize it's the love of money and not money that's bad. You don't get caught up in Christian socialism. You don't buy into the fact of saying, hey, I'm going to look to the state to be my daddy and be the be in charge of everything, you realize the power of the individual. And when you realize and you create and you take the time and you work very, very hard, maybe you're a franchise owner of one of McDonald's or someplace else. McDonald's got itself into its own mess because they don't come out swinging. You say my food's bad, then don't eat it. We're doing our best we can. Here's the health information. Let the market choose. I'm not encouraging McDonald's to make bad decisions. I'm saying they'll respond to the market, but don't buy into the baloney, the, the, the stew out there that is complete nonsense of, of whether it's your hiring or some propaganda film by Morgan Spurlock that wasn't accurate.
But as a business owner, you feel each and every cost, and you're doing that, and you're putting all this together. And then you have President Obama come in and say, hey, you didn't build that, you didn't earn that. That hasn't gone away. That's still the underlying belief. And that's why you'll still get pitches on infrastructure, being able to create jobs. And, hey, we just need to have more shovel-ready jobs. 3% of the stimulus actually went there. We have a lot of comments about the stimulus being infrastructure jobs. And if you really want to create jobs and you think shovel-ready projects are the way to go and it's about employing people and not fixing a problem like infrastructure, which has been exaggerated, incidentally, and I'll bring you that story tomorrow, then why not give them all spoons, as Milton Friedman would say, and then we could have more people working. Don't give them shovels, give them spoons. That way we'll do it. It's all about where does the money come from and who's doing the producing. You must produce in order to consume. Brain Durham's nothing but truth. Honor your life, compassion, your heart. Always keep the faith in Jesus Christ.